The meetings, first proposed in Parliament last year, focused on the objectives and legal and financial aspects of the transaction. As well as government ministers and the opposition, the meeting was attended by Financial Secretary Albert Mena and the directors of Gibraltar Capital Assets Limited, James Levy QC, John Collado and Charles Serruya, with legal adviser Peter Montegrifo QC of Hassans. The Chief Minister said tenants will enjoy all previous protections and rights, with the Housing Authority still responsible for allocation and maintenance of the estates. He says this is an investment which allows Gibraltar to benefit from historically low rates of interest. Well, it can be termed an investment because when somebody buys a bond or a gilt, that is termed an investment and that is money given to a third party who offers that bond or that gilt and then pays the return on that gilt and the principal as well. And that is called an investment, not a loan. You need to look at what has happened. You need to understand the position that the government has been able to put Gibraltar in and that is exactly the right position to be in. Otherwise, look at what happened between 2007 and 2011 where you had projects that could not get off the ground in Gibraltar, not because there was a problem economically in Gibraltar, but because there was a financial crisis affecting banks in the rest of the world and they could not lend in Gibraltar for projects that would otherwise have been very successful here. We have now guaranteed that we have the firepower available in order to be able to start projects which will be good for Gibraltar, which will be good investments that will produce either revenue streams or capital returns and we will not be affected by the fact that post-Brexit it's a much more difficult proposition to get any of that sort of borrowing. The Chief Minister says the determination that this is not public debt has been made by experts including the Financial Secretary and GSD founding member Peter Montegrifo. The GSD, however, says this has doubled Gibraltar's public debt, describing it as a mortgage against six housing estates that will burden an entire future generation. It's evident that uh, elements of this transaction will mean will have implications for people in Gibraltar and, and tenants. Um, for example, the, we know that now that the rental income for uh, the six housing estates will now effectively be assigned to Gibraltar Capital Assets Limited, who will use that money towards paying the interest on the loan notes, which will come up to about 11 million a year. But the rent alone is not going to be enough to service the interest, and the government, through one of its government-owned companies, is going to have to make a contribution or something in the order of another eight or nine million pounds to make up a difference. This is quite a significant uh, expense uh, for, for Gibraltar, and this is not happening through the if you want to call it the official books of Gibraltar, the, the Consolidated Fund and the Improvement and Development Fund. Certainly, in terms of this is something that's happened before, um, the scale of it is something that's completely unprecedented. What you have here is a government, without reference to Parliament, has actually borrowed almost 100% more on debt than they already had. And that debt is about £350 million. Pounds. They got on borrowed another £300 million without any reference to Parliament whatsoever. Now I ask you, is that right? The GSD cites the financial modelling presented, which it says should require a 3% rent rise annually. However, the government says it has not made this determination and will look itself at whether rents need to be raised. For her part, independent opposition MP Marlene Hassan Naon says while there are many pieces of the deal that are commendable, the government is bearing most of the risks associated with this. She urges it to disclose a broad range of information on the arrangement. The 300 million is capital which gives us a, a degree of firepower in uncertain times. The issues that uh, we have are firstly the fact that the, um, that the loan is not considered public debt. Now, anywhere else in the world, um, in most Western democracies, one or two of the characteristics could deem it necessary to be considered public debt. And in this case, it satisfies five of the characteristics and it's still not public debt. We were explained by the government what it was going to be used for. We were explained that it wasn't going to be used to fuel manifesto commitments and I'm grateful for that explanation and I have no reason not to believe that explanation. Time will tell, but if it's not, what is it going to be used for? And it also needs to be available to be scrutinised. The GSD highlights that despite Gibraltar Capital Assets Limited having been incorporated the day before the last general election, this £300 million loan was not mentioned by the campaigning alliance. 
It says we still don't know exactly what this money will be used for, nor see in Parliament what happens to it. For its part, the government says it's being more open and more accountable than any administration in our history, with this deal to go towards capital projects designed to produce growth and generate economic activity for the ROC.